I want to show you five tips that are going to help you use Odoo like a professional. This video is mostly for beginners, so people that have been using Odoo a while probably know these tips and tricks. Stick around, see if you've learned something new, and definitely share this with the folks that are new. I'm also saving the best one for the end, so stick around. First one here, uh, you ever seen these little purple things that show up whenever you first create the database. Maybe you create a lot of databases for Odoo. Perhaps you are a, a budding partner or someone that works with a lot of Odoo databases and you keep seeing this purple thing pop up. That's what we call a tour in Odoo and it's actually incredibly helpful to navigate uh, or to, to help you navigate uh, when you are first starting out in Odoo. But you, if you're watching this, you are someone that just wants it out of the way because you know what you're doing. Let's disable those tours here. So we're gonna go into our settings app. Uh, from our settings app, we have to go down to the bottom because we have to activate the developer mode here. When we do that, it's gonna hop us back into our home screen here. And we get this little bug icon that we get to click on. And right there, we can select disable tours. Just as easy as that, they won't show up anymore. Uh, and so we'll have those out of the way. Number two. Whenever you create a database, you might be inundated in your inbox with such helpful emails on a daily basis from the database that you have created. That's what we call a digest email. Uh, again, there it's an incredibly useful tool to allow us to get a snapshot of what our company did that day, uh, things including how many users are were active uh, or what kind of sales we brought in. But it's not always necessary that we send them to every user, nor is it necessary that we receive one every day. So let's go ahead and edit those digest emails. Again, I'm gonna hop into our settings app here and scroll down uh, for a little bit until we get to digest emails. We can go ahead and configure digest emails. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I create databases, I turn them off so that I don't get inundated with those emails. But maybe we wanna configure it. Uh, of course, whenever we make a change, we have to save in our settings app. Uh, so we have to go back down here and configure that uh, digest email again. We actually get to create many digest emails if we'd like, uh, but we get the one default one here, the periodicity of that being one day. We can set that weekly, monthly, even quarterly if we only want to see those uh, you know, four times a year there. Uh, so we have the ability to shut off certain access uh, to viewing things such as connected users or all sales for that day. Uh, and we can also turn off who's a recipient and who's not. Uh, so you can see I am the only user there, so I am the only recipient. When you create users, they are by default gonna be added as a recipient there. So you may wanna remove them if they're not someone that needs to see those daily, weekly, quarterly uh, emails there. So be sure to adjust your digest emails to who you want them sent to and how often you want them sent. Or again, if you don't want them sent at all, the go-to is just to shut them off and hit save. The next one is about our filters. So say we wanna create a default filter for something like our sales orders. Maybe we wanna group them by customer and we wanna be able to share that with all of our users. If you're familiar with Odoo, you're gonna realize that you can either set it as a default or share with all users. Don't ask me why, but there is a workaround. Let me go ahead and show you. We're in a run bot here uh, with data already in there. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the sales app here and we're gonna see the filter is already set as my quotations. Uh, so what we can do, we can add to that filter by going, uh, selecting this drop down here, uh, selecting group by and down to customer. So now we have all of our customers' orders grouped by the customer name. Uh, so now say we wanna save that as the default filter for us, we can go into save current search and we can name this filter. We can call this, uh, you know, group by customer, something very creative like that. Uh, and what we're gonna to wanna to do is select save as a default filter. So we can go ahead and save. And so now whenever we hop in and out, we're always gonna get that filter available to us but we wanna be able to share that with our other users now. And that's just not possible with the click of that shared checkbox because we can only, again, do one or the other. 
So there is a way to accomplish this. You have to be in developer mode. So of course, go back to step one where I showed you how to get into developer mode. You see this little bug icon. What you want to do is select this bug icon and select manage filters here. Here's that filter I just created. It's got the name, it's got the user that it's associated with. It even has a domain of what that filter entails. So say we want to add this same filter, but with a different user, what we can do then is just duplicate the filter and change that user. So let's go ahead, hop in here. We can select the gear icon and select duplicate. And instead of Mitchell admin, I want Joel Willis to have that access. And so now we have two users. My filters is already added as a filter, so we can remove that and see we have group by, and it, and it creates that copy word to it. So what I like to do, I like to identify it with the initials of that user because it's not, it's not gonna let you save the same filter name. Uh, so best way to differentiate that I have found is just to add those initials, give it some uniqueness to it. Uh, and now we have group by customer and then we have group by customer Joel Willis there. Now, if you're really tech savvy, you can even export this and re-import with all of your users information. I will leave you to figure that one out there. There's two more to get through. I promise it's going to be worth it. The next one is about how we can use keyboard shortcuts in our database. So if we hop into a model here, we actually have access. If you're on a PC, it's just simply alt and you can see all of these uh, items pop up. If you're on a Mac, if you're on a Mac, you're going to use control alt. Had to look that one up there. Uh, so really super simple. You can use these hotkeys, get back to the home screen, for instance, uh, manage your orders here. I like to go into here. Uh, I'm going to remove this filter that we just created here. I'm going to look up all of our quotation orders. You know, I never realize how much these hotkeys uh, are, you know, work for folks or how much people use them. But when you're using so many, when you're with so many documents every single day processing them, it makes it a whole lot easier. So you can do something like this where you can set up um, a record like this, hit Alt here, and then you have access to so many things. So we can start confirming, uh, you know, these sales orders, converting these quotes into sales orders. You can see that carrot up there to get us to that next record is going to be a Control P or an Alt P. Whoops, there we are. Funny enough, Screencastify does not let me do P. It just turns that into a pen. Don't want that. But of course, we can uh, flip through these the other way. Uh, and again, we can create invoices out of these. You just have to follow along with those instructions. Super helpful. I'm going to leave a, uh, a link to a uh, index of these hotkeys for you to play around with. Uh, so definitely take a look at those. And finally, I saved the best one for the end here. If you've ever wondered how, if, if there was possibly an easier way to get to debug mode, developer mode, because going to the settings app uh, all the time and scrolling all the way down to the bottom can get tedious after a while. And if you're in Odoo long enough, you're, you know that you're going to need developer mode because it allows you to see so much. It allows you to see all of these fields, uh, calendars aren't a good example, uh, but when you're in developer mode, all of these question marks here show you the technical names of fields, gives you the ability to see that so that you can reference that in studio, for instance, or even if you're doing customizations, you're gonna need developer mode. So is there an easy way to get to developer mode? There is. A lot of folks have already utilized, and I always utilize this browser extension up here, this little monkey here, when the eyes are open, he is in debug mode, we can click him and we are out of debug mode. Uh, again, we can click him once more to get him back into developer mode. You can see that bug, uh, leave, come back, leave, come back. Uh, if you double click, you activate uh, developer mode with assets. So that is an excellent developer tool for people quickly trying to get into debug mode. So I'm gonna leave the browser extension for that in the this description here for you guys to utilize uh, 
so that you can hop into developer mode a lot more quickly. So test out these features. Hope this helps you navigate. Oh, do a little more. And let me know if you have any questions.